This video will review completing the square using a visual model. Problem number one has the trinomial x squared plus 6x plus 9. Down below we see the tiles that match this. The x squared is the yellow tile, which is x by x wide, having an area of x squared. There are six of the blue tiles, which are x by 1 wide, which would be 6 times 1x. The little red ones are 1 by 1 each, which would give them an area of 1. There are nine of them, meaning we have the plus 9 at the end of the trinomial. To start, we're going to group our x's. There are six x's, which means we can break them into two piles of three x's. We'll then line them up against the x squared. Three of them will go to the right, and three will go below. Looking at this, we now have to fill it in, the piece on the bottom right, with the ones. It is a three by three space, which means I will take nine of the squares to fill in. So if I start moving them down, and organize it, I see that I use all of my ones tile to complete the square. x squared plus six x plus nine is a perfect square because we can fill in a square and use all of the tiles. This is, again, a perfect square because we have no pieces left over. To find the dimensions of this, we'll start by looking at the top. The top is x plus 3 wide. The side is also x plus 3. I can therefore rewrite the area as a product, which we'll later refer to as factored form, as the quantity x plus 3 squared. This means the qu uh, quantity x plus 3 times another quantity x plus 3. If we turn our attention to problem 2, we see that we are going to try making a complete square out of x squared plus 10x plus 29. In the picture, I see one of the yellow x by x squares, that is an area of x squared. I see 10 of the rectangles that have a area of x, the dimensions are 1 by x. And I see that there's 29 of the little squares, which are 1 by 1s, which have an area of 1. We'll start by grouping the 10 x's. If we divide 10 x into two piles, that would be two piles that are 5 x each. We'll move five of them to the right, and we'll put five of them below. To fill in the missing pieces, we see that we have an area that is 5 by 5 wide. That will take 25 of the squares to fill in. We can make a complete square, but we have leftover pieces. The dimensions of the square are x plus 5 by x plus 5. That would be the quantity x plus 5 squared. However, it's not a, comp er, it's not a perfect square because we do have those leftover pieces, which means we'll have to adjust the expression. I see that we have four tiles left over, so after the quantity x plus 5 squared, we'll just put plus 4. x squared plus 10x plus 29 can be rewritten as the quantity x plus 5 squared plus 4. To do problem 3, we see that we have two x squareds, two of the yellow squares, eight of the rectangles, 8x, and 12 of the ones, 12 of the red squares. We'll start by spreading the x squareds out into equal piles. We have two of the x squareds, which means we'll split those up. We'll then divide the blue x's um, between the two x squareds. That means we can have four x's with each. For each of those four x's, we'll then break those into two piles, which would be 2x and 2x. And we'll do that for the other one as well. We then need to fill in the missing pieces with the ones tiles. Each missing piece is two squares by two squares wide, meaning it will take four squares to fill in. We do it once, and we do it again. We see that we have some leftover pieces. So we get two perfect squares out of it, plus the remaining pieces. Each of those squares has a dimension of x plus 2 by x plus 2, which means we have two of the quantity x plus 2 squares plus the four left over. 2x squared plus 8x plus 12 can be thought of as two quantity x plus 2 squared plus four left over. I hope this helps you. Thank you for watching this video.